All right, I'm back. So, um, yeah, the, again, we're talking about subtler and subtler differences. The higher up we go in the tiers, as a general rule, it's, I mean, it's the law of diminishing returns. I once um, posted about that on a watch forum some years ago, and I got totally attacked. I won't mention the forum, but I was totally attacked because people just were like, oh, you don't get it. You know, the higher, higher, the more expensive watches, they're just, they, they didn't, they didn't, they wouldn't embrace that, or they, they wouldn't even be open to the idea that the more money you spend, the less you're getting back in return, which to me, it's just, it's true in everything, in all fields, right? Um, the difference between a $10 bottle of wine and a $20 bottle of wine is much greater than the difference between a $20 and a $30 bottle of wine. It's, it, it's just the case. So, um, as a general rule, 80-20, right? <laughs> so, anyways, so there's a, so, talked a little bit about, you know, the subtler refinements. There's definitely, like, you know, even just looking at these now, I don't know if you can see them, but just the, the design work, the fit and finish of these are higher, there's higher quality. I've also noticed that tier four watches tend to feel better on the wrist. They tend to be more balanced. There's more work that goes into the design of how it looks and feels on your wrist. But there's another factor that I think is important that's specific to you, Jeff, which is that um, you haven't owned a Swiss watch as far as I can tell. And without, I'm trying not to sound like a Swiss snob, but there's a different quality to Swiss watches than Japanese watches. And it's hard to, it's hard to describe. I think it's similar to the difference between Japanese cars and say Euro European cars. The difference between say a Toyota or a Honda or a Subaru versus a BMW or a Volkswagen or an Audi, right? There, there's now, I'm not saying one's inherently superior to the other, but um, there's a stylistic quality that I personally prefer. I generally prefer, I mean, I, I love Seiko and Citizen, they make a lot of great watches, but I don't. I, I feel like there's something in the styles of, of the Omegas and the Breitlings of the world and the Oris. There's something in the Swiss culture and aesthetic. Maybe it's because they've been doing it for longer. But Seiko's been making watches for a long time too. Uh, maybe it's m me being of European descent, so I have a stronger cultural resonance with. The European style. And so I'm kind of reaching there though, because I'm I'm half Italian, and you'd think that like Panerai and um, Bulgari would 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 be the most appealing watches if that was true. And Anno Nemo, I like those brands, but um, but there I think there's something to the Swiss aesthetic that I personally like, and that gives that sort of luxury feeling. But again. I think the bottom line is that the the a lot of the difference when you go up the tiers are 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 it's mental isn't quite the right word psychological intangible right I do think um, if we just look at these four watches there as I hopefully pointed out there are distinct differences in the movement in the the fit and finish in the design, right? You're, you're getting higher quality. First tier, second tier, third tier, fourth tier. There are, there are tangible differences, but the, I mean, you know, my wife might not be able to tell that. I mean, actually she probably would. Um, or I had my, um, my, my good friend's son was looking, he looking at my watches. He's 13 and he, I asked him, well, which one do you think are the most expensive? And he pointed out, the two Breitlings or, or the Omega. So he knew, <laughs> um, he knew right away. Now, I don't know if that's just because they are on the higher, they were, I had two rows and there was the top row and the bottom row. Um, but they're, 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 you know, they're, it's, my point is, is that if you, if you don't have the developed palette, you're less likely to see the subtle differences. Um, so I see, so there's a difference you know, first tier, second tier, third tier, fourth tier. The differences get subtler and subtler. Like this and this are probably, well, actually, I would almost say that the biggest jump is here, is between second and third tier, right? There's a big jump there in terms of quality. And, and what I was saying before is the biggest jump 
in terms of the biggest noticeable jump is that this this watch as a third tier watch doesn't cut the same corners as this watch does or other second tier watches and this is really noticeable if you look at the difference of an Oris Divers Date or an Oris Aquas and like a Seiko Sumo There's, you see the the Seiko Sumo is is halfway equal to this right the the case the fit and finish of the case the movement is all equal to the Oris in my opinion but the bracelet the clasp the crystal the bezel i feel like the bezel is 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 definitely a second tier bezel with that aluminum print um the the limited one has that nice sort of ceramic-y um lacquered one um and then and then jumping up here though i would say the difference between these two is smaller than these two and and actually to some degree a lot of it has to do with the name omega right but there are all so the differences are there but they're smaller and i think as far as i can tell from from having worn and handled you know a couple tier five watches you know like for instance the submariner the rolex submariner to me fit and finish wise isn't any better than the seamaster i know some people are going to not like that but that's that's my sense but the rolex submariner as a tier five watch rolex ha rolex can can jump their prices right so there's that there's also there are some tangible differences like for instance rolex uses a higher grade of steel on their watches than than omega does um rolex uses a fully in-house movement so the movement would be a superior movement as far as i understand to the omega now some people might disagree with that i i haven't heard otherwise i've heard that the rolex so that's 3135 or something like that for the Submariners is, is, you know, it's a great, uh, but, but the actual physical presentation of it is not better. I, I, I haven't seen a difference. I prefer the aesthetic of the Seamaster. To me, the Seamaster is a better looking watch, but that's, that's personal taste. I'm not, I'm not saying that's a better or worse thing. That's, that's my own <clears throat> personal taste. Um, the Rolex, so, so, so you're getting, you know, like if this was, say three and a half grand if, if the newest seamasters are what about three or four grand new and the rolex is i think seven the rolex Submariner is seven or eight grand is it, you're talking about twice as much and the differences there are name brand you know the prestige of a rolex um which is still more highly regarded than omega um the in-house movement the higher grade steel that's all in my opinion it's not a superior physical piece um and then when you get to tier six watches, you're talking about greater complications and finishes on the actual movement itself. Maybe different metals, precious materials are used, um, gemstones, gold, white gold, platinum even. Um, so there, there's, there's actually a jump in tangi tangible differences. Although again, the finish and the design isn't necessarily higher quality than a tier five or a tier four watch. You're talking about more expensive materials and more hand finishing complexity to the movement. And then tier seven is just another extension of that. You get truly ridiculously complicated movements, torbalons, although I think they start happening in tier six. I think you can get cheap Chinese knockoff turbulence for, for much less. Um, so I, I think when, when you're talking about the tiers and what are the differences, in a way it comes down to what, what matters to you as an individual about a watch. Do you care about, you know, if it's just functionality, then no one should ever buy anything more than a tier two watch. You know, you're going to get everything you need with, you know, a Casio edifice or G-Shock or, you know, a Seiko dress, you know, a Sarb 33 type dress watch. You don't, you never need to spend more than, than, you know, two or three hundred dollars on a watch. And even that might be excessive. You know, you, maybe you could find something decent, you know, for a hundred, hundred, hundred bucks or so. But if it's the design and the fit and the finish and, if, and the aesthetics, then I think t tier three to four is your sweet spot. You don't need to even go higher than tier four unless there's a watch that you really love the look of or there's something about it that's really appealing to you. And then, then you have to look beyond that. Um, but 
The main reason to buy a tier five or higher watch, well, there's two reasons. One is the, the prestige, and the other is if you're really interested in the, the horology of the movement and maybe the history of the, of the piece. But in terms of aesthetics, I don't think you're really getting, I think, I think it peaks at around tier four. Now, maybe my view on this will change, um, but I found that this has just been my opinion from what I've seen from going to watch shops, from looking online, from reading, and my, that's, that's my impression, that, that the aesthetic and physical design, it, 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 when I say peaks out, it doesn't mean there's not improvement beyond that. It means that it, um, I guess it's a softer, it's like the, the singularity point. There's, there's very, it's, the, it's when, the law did, when the curb hits that point where the, the differences are, are less and less noticeable. Um, so I hope that in these long rambling videos, I um, answered your question, Jeff. Um, yeah, so let me know if you have any more questions or if, or if you want further clarification about my perspective on this um, or if anyone has any further thoughts. All right, talk to you all later, folks. Fit and finish of these are higher, there's higher quality. I've also noticed that tier four watches tend to feel better on their wrists. They tend to be more balanced. There's more work that goes into the design of how it looks and feels on your wrist. But there's another factor that I think all right, I'm back. So, um, yeah, the, again, we're talking about subtler and subtler differences. The higher up we go in the tiers, as a general rule, it's, I mean, it's the law of diminishing returns. I once um, posted about that on a watch forum some years ago, and I got totally... So, um, as a general rule, 80-20, right? <laughs> so, anyways, so there's a... So, talked a little bit about, you know, the subtler refinements... There's definitely like you know even just looking at these now I don't know if you can see them but just the the design work the fully attacked I won't mention the forum but I was totally attacked because people just were like oh you don't get it you know the higher higher the more expensive watches they're just they, they didn't they didn't they wouldn't embrace that or they they wouldn't even be open to the idea that the more money you spend the less you're getting back in return which to me it's just it's true in everything in all fields right. Um, the difference between a $10 bottle of wine and a $20 bottle of wine is much greater than the difference between a $20 and a $30 bottle of wine. It's, it, it's just the case.